On the day of his inauguration in 1925, President Calvin Coolidge signed a special act of Congress. It was a law that brought together a group of musicians stationed at the old Navy Yard, and it created a new military band, which today has been called one of the finest bands in the world. Members of the Navy Band come from Juilliard, the Eastman School of Music, Curtis, or any one of a dozen of the best schools in the nation, including the Navy's own School of Music in Norfolk. Before entering the band, each player undergoes a difficult audition and is selected solely on the basis of having the highest musical ability. Concert band on stage. Concert band on stage for morning rehearsal. As leader of the Navy band, Commander Anthony A. Mitchell is a veteran of 30 years' service in Navy music. Now will you get up this, uh, just a little of the uh, allies on the march. Played in a sort of attack, don't forget, the attack the minuendo. Lots of, lots of right attacks. See if we can't get maybe something a little more out of it this time as we, than we did before, huh? Nice and crisp. We want it crisp. We want it, we want it to be heavy, but we want it to be exciting. We want to punch it out. Just punch it out nice. There we go. You must watch coming off of those long notes. Da, 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 da. We've got to wait for that beat to come in there, men. Da, 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 da. Hmm? Once the tempo is started, it should go. It should. It should stay with you from then on. That's well and good, but now we need just a little bit of the what I was telling you about. Da, 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 da. Let a little bit, let a little bit of that body creep in there now. Ta, 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 ta. If you'll tongue it sharply, it will still come out. Ta, 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 ta. It'll still come out in a nice tongue, man. Let a little bit of that body creep in there now. Right up. Ta, 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 ta. Now let the body creep in without without it appearing to be too too broad for a march march style of uh, you know. All right. <laughs> Can't you hear the difference? The difference is right there. All of a sudden, you've got sound. You've got sound coming out of your band, rather than a lot of technicalities. You have sound quality. You can actually hear now. Da, you can hear them. You can hear what the numbers actually. When it comes at me, it's altogether different. You fellows, if you would be down here where I am, you would see it. You, I mean, you would hear it. It's so much better. Da, 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 da. Just attack the shot beat. Here we go.
him the other day was making a good point of something, and we should remember a lot of the fine things that he said. I think he had a lot on the ball. And there's just that sudden, you know, thump da dum thump thump Very effective, you know, thump da dum thump thump And mainly the, the, the reverberation is coming from the percussion. You've got to be double careful. You've got to immediately stifle your, the end, right? Thump da dum thump thump da da dum da So don't forget. Don't forget to do that. Stifle those who are missing, uh, especially in the percussion. Next. da da dum da dum bum 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 One, two. <laughs> is a critical time of decision in developing the performance of a musical score. It is the empty canvas on which a conductor will experiment until he obtains his own personal mode of expression. During the difficult hours of bringing a composition to life, he will demand ever-increasing quality from his players until he is thoroughly satisfied with their performance. That way you will lighten everything. We've got 70 men playing brass instruments and all this heavy instruments. We've got to lighten it. And it sounds tremendous if you do. All of a sudden it becomes a nice, light, moving instrument instead of this big, heavy brass uh, woodwind sound. And people say, we're going to hear a band. We're going to hear a big mass of instruments. You don't have to hear a mass of instruments. They can hear a good symphonic sound. All right, everybody right there. <laughs> This is the fifth attempt at a new score, a classical composition that is more demanding than the march. If it goes well, he will not interrupt their performance. building have echoed to the sounds of music for a hundred years. There is a sense of history here, the feeling of a bygone era.
Generations of musicians have passed through here, and like their predecessors, the band members still practice in the empty spaces of the old building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, this is in relation to the job the band has with you at the Statler Hilton on 26 September. The color guard will come in, the band will play the anthem, remain for the invocation, play music, and then the band will depart. All right, sir, if anything further comes up or any clarification you need, please call me. Otherwise, we'll see you that evening, 1830. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commander. Goodbye. As the Navy band grew in size and stature through the years, its duties became more diversified. To its concert band, it would later add a dance band, an honors band for ceremonial occasions, and a dozen smaller specialized ensembles. As its responsibilities grew, so did the need for jobs that would keep some of the players from playing, administration, supply and maintenance accounting and public information. Jobs that are as necessary today as that of performing. The administration of the band is the responsibility of its executive officer and assistant conductor, Lieutenant Donald Stauffer, a graduate of the Eastman School of Music and the man who will eventually become the band's leader. At the heart of the band is the arranging staff. For it is here where music is created, where ideas are translated to musical notation that will eventually take the form of melodies and harmonies. You now, in the introduction, I was thinking of uh, this uh, flute by itself being way down here. All right? Very good, yeah. And then uh, with the harp, coming in something like this town. Chief Ernie Forte at the piano and Chief Ben Mitchell Morris together represent over 50 years of service in the Navy uh, Band. They are working on a new arrangement of an American folk song. The end result of this work will be a finished composition, music to be copied, rehearsed, talked about, and one day performed before the public. Higher key, I think it would be better. We put it down in A. That's a good key. All right. Now, anything else you, uh, you can think well, of here? Let's try that first line and see how that sounds. Mm -hmm. Give me the introduction with the flutes and I see how that sounds. Tis 
the gift to be simple, is the gift to be free, is the gift to come down where you ought to be. Yeah, let's uh, go back. All right, now in the uh, third section, I think that uh, maybe we can introduce the chorus with you also. On, on the third section, on the third yes. Section, yes. Uh, That's good. It'll and go then, out uh, big. It'll go out large, yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where you ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, we'll be in the valley of love and delight. When through simplicity Tom Ritter George, a graduate of the Eastman School of Music, is the band's official composer in residence. Like Chief Forte, his job is to create music. Right here after 20 in the flute, don't tongue quite so much, a little more legato here, and a background in a horn bassoon, please, <coughs> we have to have it uh, much more legato, very neutral, Meaning sounding completely out of the way, you're right, right, completely out of the way of, of the flute. Could I hear a little bit of that background? It doesn't sound like the two parts are equally balanced, exactly, Where right at 20. Oh yeah, there's no other, excuse me, clarinet and bassoon. Just play. Yeah, all right. All right. Let's let's try this again. Uh, three, three before twenty. Three before twenty. 
Why don't we start there? I'll give you the cue, all right? When summer arrives in the nation's capital, the band begins its annual season of outdoor concerts. And now, all the hard work during the year, the endless rehearsals and arranging and administrative tasks are finally channeled into the most important job of all, performing before a live audience. Mr. Dick Bain, may I help you please? That's right. Navy Band does concerts every Monday on the uh, Capitol steps at 8 o'clock and every Thursday at uh, 8.30 down at the Potomac Watergate. That's June to August. So we start at the Capitol, and then we end the following Thursday at the Watergate. All right. We, you want lights, likely, on the... Yeah, we want lights. We need light on the leader there. You know, he's always in the dark. And the sea channel is window there, and our solos. And solos. Right. Use the banner? We're going to use the banner this year? Uh, we'd like to use a banner down there to Watergate if it's that, That's if a it's tremendous feasible. thing if we can get it up there. A lot of tourists go by with cameras and take a picture and they really don't know which band it is until they, they see that banner. The C channels I would say until they hear them. <laughs> the C channels operate well back there in that shell because it projects their sound. But then the banner is shot if you pick them in there because you can't, uh, we can put them, move them over possibly. Well, let's see. We're not having the solo festival the outside this year. Yeah, we'll have that move. The departmental auditorium. Okay. You want to go outside with the children's concert this year? Uh, no, we'll go inside maybe in the fall. But we'll see. We'll right. see what, what turns out. The summer concerts in Washington begin in June and end in August, a pattern the band has followed since the days of the Civil War. But tonight's concert at the Lincoln Memorial has a special meaning, for at the end of this season, Commander Anthony Mitchell retires after 30 years of dedicated service in Navy music. When he leaves, a new leader will take the podium. And so the tradition of good music that has always been the hallmark of the Navy band will continue through the years. The Navy Band's greatest gift to this country is music. And through its music, a vision of history and the uncommon valor of the American fighting man. 
a vision which remains a very special gift. As long as there are people who want to hear good music, there will be bands of musicians, such as these Navy men, who come together to perform on a warm summer evening in the nation's capital. And they will sing the songs and play the stirring marches that entertain us and remind us of our good heritage.